Alright, so today we're looking at this paper called SAM3D, 3DFI Anything in Images, which comes out of Meta Super Intelligence Labs. Now, you might remember the original Segment Anything model, or SAM, which was a huge deal for 2D segmentation. Well, this paper essentially tries to do the same thing, but for 3D reconstruction, where the goal is to take a single image and not only predict the 3D shape and texture, of the objects in it, but also their layout in the 3D scene. It creates what they call visually grounded 3D reconstruction data at an unprecedented scale, and they achieve this not just by training a massive model, but by building a very specific data engine that involves both models and humans in the loop to break what they call the 3D data barrier. Let's jump straight into the model architecture which they break down into two main stages, starting with the geometry model. The problem formulation here is that you have an image I and a mask M, and you want to approximate the conditional distribution of the shape S, texture T, and the layout parameters, which are rotation R, translation T, and scale A's. To do this, they use a latent flow matching architecture, where the input image is processed by a DynoF2 encoder they actually encode two versions of the input, where one is a cropped view of the object to get high resolution details, and the other is the full image to capture the global scene context and occlusion cues, which is pretty important when you are dealing with messy real world images. These embeddings are fed into what they call a mixture of transformers architecture, which allows them to process the shape tokens and the layout tokens somewhat independently while still sharing information through a multimodal self-attention layer. Once you have that coarse geometry, the system passes it to the second stage called the texture and refinement model. This takes the active voxels predicted by the first stage and uses another sparse latent flow transformer to refine the geometric details and synthesize the object texture. What happens here is that they condition this refinement model on the image and mask again, and the output is a set of latent representations that can be decoded into either a mesh or 3D Gaussian splats, depending on what you need. Now, the architecture is solid, but the real contribution of this paper is how they train it. Because good 3D data paired with images basically does not exist at this scale. They use a multi-stage training recipe that starts with synthetic pre-training, where they use renders of isolated objects from datasets like Objaverse to learn the basics of shape and texture. Then they move to what they call mid-training, which is really cool because they use a technique called render and paste, or ARP3DO. They take those synthetic 3D models and paste them into natural images using depth maps to handle occlusion which forces the model to learn how to reconstruct objects that are partially hidden or in cluttered scenes without needing expensive real-world annotations yet. After the model has learned some priors from synthetic data, they move to post-training, which involves a model in the loop or MITL pipeline. The insight here is that while humans are terrible at creating 3D meshes from scratch, they are actually quite good at looking at a few 3D options and telling you which one looks best. So they generate multiple candidate meshes using their model or retrieval methods and show them to human annotators who simply rank them or select the best one. This turns a generation task into a verification task which is much faster and scalable and allows them to collect millions of preference signals which they then use to fine-tune the model using supervised fine-tuning and direct preference optimization or DPO. But there is a catch because sometimes the model is just bad and all the candidates are garbage, so the humans have nothing good to pick. To solve this, they introduce stage 2.5 where they route the hardest examples to actual professional 3D artists who manually create the ground truth meshes. This is expensive, so they only do it for the tails of the distribution, but it sees the model with high quality data in areas where it struggles, which creates a flywheel effect. As the model gets better, it produces better candidates for the general annotators, which leads to better data, 
and an even better model in a virtuous cycle. In terms of results, they evaluate this on a new benchmark they collected called SA3DAO, which consists of artist created meshes for real world images. The quantitative metrics show that SAM3D significantly outperforms recent baselines like Trellis and Hunyuan 3D, especially on metrics like volume IOU and chamfer distance. Qualitatively, the reconstructions look much more consistent with the input image, especially in terms of handling occlusions, where other models tend to just produce broken geometry or floaters. And that basically wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this explanation helpful, give it a thumbs up, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to stay up to date with everything I post on this channel. See you in the next one. Bye bye.